What's happening, friends? Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick, and on this channel, I talk about cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, and economics. So if you like those topics, be sure to like and subscribe. Today's video is about uh, a new project launching on the Cosmos Network that I've been hearing quite a bit about recently. This project is known as the Juno Network. Juno brands itself as a permissionless, interoperable, smart contract network. So it's a layer one built on top of Cosmos. And I'll break down piece by piece in this video what each part of that phrase means, permissionless, interoperable, smart contract network, some of the unique features of Juno, some exciting events that Juno had, including one just earlier today, a few hours ago, where you can purchase Juno if this sounds appealing to you, and then some risks that I see with the project moving forward. With that, let's get into it. So uh, yeah, so first, this is Juno, as you can see, snazzy website here. And so what do they mean by permissionless interoperable smart contract network? They don't say permissionless here, but, but it's in many of their materials. So the first thing to understand is that Cosmos is a layer zero, like we've talked about in this channel many times, and there are many different chains built on top of it. And so uh, permissionless means that on uh, Juno, any, any developer who wants to can build a dApp and deploy it to the change, provided that they're able to pay the transaction fee. Uh, and that might sound like no big deal if you're used to Ethereum or Avalanche C-Chain or even the Terra network. But the thing to understand is that most chains on Cosmos, like Osmosis, for example, uh, which is a fantastic project, but most chains are have permissioned dApps on them, meaning that to deploy on the chain, you need a governance vote from the validators. And that's because the chains are often uh, purpose-built for a specific dApp. What Juno is, is it's building a permissionless smart contract network, sort of uh, like Ethereum, like Solana, that will be built on top of Cosmos. And so uh, what makes this different than a different layer one? Well, it's interoperable because it's built on top of Cosmos. It's connected to Cosmos' IBC. And the IBC is what connects all of the different chains that are built on Cosmos back to the Cosmos hub. So those are chains like Osmosis, more recently chains like Terra and Secret Network, Akash, Sentinel, Lots of good projects that we've covered on here before. Those are connected to the IBC. So what makes uh, Juno unique from all these other things is that smart contracts built on Juno will actually be able to interact with other chains that are built on Cosmos. So right now, I think there's somewhere between 15 and 20 chains that are connected to Cosmos. You can imagine that eventually there might be hundreds of chains connected to the IBC and, and a smart contract that say... Uh, was activated on Juno could cause something to happen uh, or funds to be sent somewhere on any of those chains, which is quite powerful, quite powerful. Uh, and, and so that's what Juno is building. And, uh, and, and additionally, in addition to that, it's 10,000 transactions per second. And it says 99% reduced costs on their website. I'm not sure what that's from, but like most proof of stake systems, it has a a very low transaction fee. Uh, and, I, and I will say that a lot of their materials, if you look into it, which I'd recommend you do, uh, if, you're, if you're interested in investing, I'd recommend you do your own research and look into this yourself. Most of their materials seem to be geared towards developers. Uh, it's a very community-focused project, which I like, and I'll talk a bit more about in a few minutes. Uh, but but it, it's, it's very much uh, geared towards a developer-type community. So let's see what else is unique about Juno. So if we hop into their documents here, you can see a lot of the things that I already mentioned in more detail. One thing that's interesting is that they have a compiler that allows developers to code in either Rust or Go right now. My understanding is, uh, is that they're also adding support for C and C++ in the near future. So, so that will allow a lot of developers who might not might not have a lot of experience with smart contracts to learn the, the libraries to build smart contracts on Juno and easily start deploying dApps to the system. I believe they've mentioned that they plan on adding a compiler that will allow you to make things that are EVM compatible as well, although that's not in their official documentation as far as I can tell. Uh, but I think what makes Juno really uh, 
unique on top of all this is just how community focused it is. So just to look at even the token distribution, you can see 47% of their of their supply was airdropped. Usually when when a team does an airdrop, it, you know, this is the airdrop, the two or three percent, and then this is for the team or VCs or whatever. They only save 2.74% for themselves and it vests. I'm not sure if you can see this, it's small, but it vests over a 12-year period, which is forever. So, so they're in it for the long term. I'd recommend you look at some interviews with the team. A lot of these are people who have been in uh, been in the cryptocurrency space and before many of us, since before many of us have heard of it for seven, ten years or longer. And probably not longer than ten years. Um, uh, but yeah, so and you can see another 31% is for the community pool. And then they've got about 20% that's saved to fund development and hackathons, which is which is pretty reasonable, I think, since they want to bootstrap the ecosystem. Uh, and yeah, so there, there were there were basically no no seed sale, no private sale, no public sale, and there's a cap for whales. So in other words, they decentralized the distribution of the Juno token from the very beginning, from the get-go. Uh, and so so that that's really, really uh, phenomenal. And then just ev everything about this project, if you look at how it originated and you look into the history of it, uh, it's all been kind of springing up from the Cosmo community and from co developers who are interested in Cosmo wanting to build a chain, wanting to build a chain where they could easily deploy smart contracts. So then uh, let's look at some of the news that came out today. Uh, this was expected, but they successfully upgraded their testnet to support Cosm Wasm 1.0. And uh, what that means is that basically smart contracts can deploy on their testnet. So this, this network is so early that they don't actually have smart contracts on their main network yet. It's in development and will hopefully be launching soon. So uh, that's part of the reason why you may not have heard of this project before. Uh, but, but they're doing it on their testnet now and in soliciting feedback from developers who are deploying dApps on there to make sure that the bugs are ironed out before they deploy the smart contracts to their main net. Uh, and if you're interested in this project, then you can buy it on Osmosis Zone. We've talked about that before on this channel. Osmosis Zone is the main DEX on Cosmos. Unfortunately, this project is so new, it's not on any exchanges yet. But you can deploy it on Osmosis Zone. You'll need your Kepler wallet. That's what this K up here in my browser is. And then if you want to purchase it, you just exchange either Atom or Osmo for Juno right on here. And it's got pretty good liquidity, I think. So for example, let's say I was buying $100,000 worth. The slippage slippage is, is under 1% still, which is a pretty pretty uh, decent size order on a project this small. Additionally, this may interest some of you. Uh, you can, can uh, pool them on Osmo. And interestingly, they are actually offering, both Juno and Osmosis are offering rewards on this. So it has 131% as the maximum APR from uh, Osmosis itself on the Atom Juno pool. However, there's an additional reward, which isn't factored into the percentage that you receive from Juno uh, to, to bootstrap liquidity. And so uh, that, that's, that's pretty appealing. If you like this project, maybe you want to do that and uh, you'll get some nice rewards. I, I would say very nice. I haven't calculated the APR, but I, 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 think, I think this would probably be pretty, pretty substantial. So uh, what are the risks of this? Because I think I think there are a few, and these are some of the hesitations I have as I'm looking at whether this is something that I want to put my put my uh, own money in, my own capital. So the first risk is, well, the smart contracts haven't been deployed on main yet. yet. The smart contracts were deployed on the test net just a few hours ago. So hopefully things go well and they're deployed to the main net and DApps launch, but not having them deployed yet of course, you can probably get the token at a cheaper price than you would after they were deployed, but you do run the risk that delays could happen, unexpected circumstances could come up, and you don't want to put your money into something uh, only for it to nothing to happen for three months or longer, especially when there's a bull run going on in other coins. So that's the first risk. Second risk is uh, once they do deploy, what's the guarantee that people will build on it? 
Like I mentioned, they're making the network very developer friendly. However, uh, you have to consider that there are now other networks connected to the IBC, which do also offer permissionless smart contracts. You have Terra, you have Secret, you have Evmos, which is a portmanteau of EVM and Cosmos, which is launching soon as well. So, so there's, there's other options for developers who want to build in an IBC-connected network now. And so there's no guarantee how many will choose Juno right away. And I'm not trying to FUD the project because I think it's a cool community-focused project. But that is a risk to consider when you're looking at the project. Uh, and then the final risk, I would say, is uh, if you look at the, the price of the token over here, which is really only available on Osmosis, you can see it's $14 right now. And over the past month, uh, from when it launched, it's come up from around $4. It crested out around $17, and it's down to $14 now. So there's the obvious risk that it's gone up more than 3x in one month, which is, is always not the ideal time to be buying. The other risk is if we go back and look at the circulating supply on this, it uh, you can see the total supply is $65 million. Let's say we'll just take the circulating supply of, of $33 million. Uh, and then taking a price of $14, you're looking at about $400 million market cap on a project uh, where the, the main product, which is smart contracts, haven't been launched yet. Uh, and, and I know you, know, you could say there, there are projects like Cardano, for example, which also doesn't have smart contract that does well. But, uh, but I would consider that to be, to be a risk as well, because that's a that's a fairly substantial market cap, I think, for a, for a project that's kind of under the radar, uh, but that, uh, yeah, that's, that's under, under the radar and doesn't have smart contracts yet. Um, and so, so that's my assessment of Juno. I think, like I said, once they do get smart contracts uh, launched, probably it's going gonna, it's gonna to pump quite well, and assuming dApps launch on it, it'll be, um, it, it, it'll be at a higher price than you'd be able to get in before they launch, but the my my main concern is is what will it do between now and then? Will will it just continue to bleed out? Uh, but overall, great project, very community focused, very in the spirit of cryptocurrency and decentralization. Uh, if you guys do like Juno, let me know down below. If you don't like Juno, also let me know. Would love to hear your opinions. If you have any small DeFi projects or yield farms, as always, leave a comment below this video or message me on Twitter, and I'll cover it on my weekly Yield Farm Friday video. Until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.